What's up everybody, coming back at you with our second kind of long-term overview video for the week. And this time is on the new-ish now Komodo X from Red. Now, we've had this a little bit, taking it out on a few shoots. Uh, when we first did an overview of this, it was brand new, only had it out on one thing and it was just kind of the quick and dirty, here's the new things. Didn't really know if they were beneficial or impactful yet, but after having it for a while now, I will 100% say that I will grab this every single time over the original Komodo. It is a better camera, as it should be, because it is more money. But what you get with that is, in my opinion, very valuable. And now this is a camera I want to use versus a camera that I am forced to use, which is what the old Komodo kind of felt like. So I'm just gonna quickly talk about some of those features and then hand this over to Galen again because he took this out and shot uh, a short film with it, which we just did a video with the Proteus on. And he got down and dirty with this camera, so we're gonna get his opinion, as he's also a great shooter, and kind of get some feelings from both of us on it. So here we go. Let's go over the main differences on this camera just quickly that I think are the most important because the size of the camera hasn't really changed that much. But in real life, the fact now that this locking RF mount exists is great. We are running the Proteus on these for this short film and they're big lenses. So the fact that we could have a locking mount between our PL is really great to really solidify that mount to the camera to eliminate any player image shift going on. And that one is honestly a really big one. Um, changing out the rear IO to the side, my God, you don't know until you're on set trying to get to an SDI cable. This is a massive upgrade and just so much easier for your AC to get to stuff. The internal audio on this, we've actually used this audio quite a few times now on some shoots just straight into the camera and it is a huge upgrade. Not only just a huge upgrade, but now it's 100% usable. And that part is really, really cool when you're talking about doing run and gun, uh, just having massively usable internal audio, really great. I will say I've noticed some people online uh, have said maybe that after a while, the if you're running for long periods of time, it just kind of shuts off and your audio stops rolling. I, we haven't experienced that here, but it has been noted um, and we're kind of keeping an eye on it as we go through these shoots as well. Another big thing is this top screen. I feel like this top screen got way more responsive and when you're on set trying to noodle around, get in here, uh, really nice that that feels a little bit more snappy. Now, the frame rates, I know a lot of people are like, I don't really care about frame rates, but I will say this has been used almost on every shoot now, 6K60, or being able to find some variant uh, of a frame rate and a shutter that is allowing me not to have lights just flicker naturally when shooting slow motion. And that one is a pretty big one as well that is a welcome upgrade. Also, just CFB is a really nice uh, form of media. To be able to run so much data through there really gives a lot of potential to the camera, which is really nice. Also just, I hated those old Canon batteries. They're great if all you wanna do is like rig it on a motorcycle and pop a battery on. But for real shooting, just being able to have the access to a standard battery directly on the back, not only cuts down on the size, just makes it so much easier if you have one battery on that has a built-in P-tap. Now you can power at least one accessory through the camera super easy without having to build some big back plate and do all this other crap. So overall, that mixed with the added functionality of new anamorphic modes and being able to shoot ProRes 444. I've done one job where I had to deliver a 444 uh, deliverable. They didn't want to shoot in raw. This thing looked great, performed well, data was well managed, um, and they were actually very impressed. The production company at the end was like, oh wow, I didn't know this camera did this now, and uh, I think that might have changed their mind a little bit moving forward on what cameras they want to shoot on. So. All in all, pretty cool, but now I'm just gonna turn this over to Galen and get his thoughts after shooting his short film. Okay, so this was my second time using a Komodo for a narrative film, and I had a way better time uh, using the Komodo X this time around. Uh, I think that in every way, shape, or form, this is a massive upgrade to the last one, which I think is fairly self-explanatory. Uh, the, the couple specific things that I really appreciate uh, honestly, just the fact that a lot of accessories have come out for this camera since the original has come out, which is a little bit of a weird one because you can use all of these on the old one as well. But the few things like the V-mount plate and the IO on the side, obvious 
clear upgrades that make things just way easier. But I do think that a huge part of it has been that so many different manufacturers have come out with third-party items to add that make the Komodo a much more production-friendly camera. With that said though, my favorite addition by far is the responsive touchscreen. I hated the original touchscreen, but at the same time, that's probably my biggest con though with this camera is that the touchscreen is on top. I don't like it that way, especially when you have a top handle and you're gonna have a top handle. It's just really frustrating, especially once you have all these cords wrapping around that you're like trying to get in here and touch shit. And at one point, like, I was trying to touch something and I changed the setting and then I was about to roll and I was like, oh crap, I like changed that setting so I had to go back and do it again. And it was because I was trying to do stuff and I couldn't exactly see what I was doing. So that's probably my biggest con to this camera is like the usability of the touchscreen is a little finicky. On top of that, the fact that the format card and eject card are the same menu one click away, why in the world is that a thing? Why is that on the same page? Like, it does make no sense. Like, the amount of times I was like going to format the media, or excuse me, the amount of times I was going to eject the media and I was like, I gotta like consciously like look at it and be like, don't format this right now. So, weird little thing there, but not the biggest deal, just something to be aware of. Uh, on top of that, my other con is just that the camera gets hot. Uh, the fan is there and it does something and it does cool the camera down, but it doesn't really do a whole lot considering the size of the camera and it's got a 6K global shutter sensor. I do think it's a little bit better managed with the CF Express Type B uh, media. It does manage that heat a little better and because the fan now blows out the other side when you're on a shoulder rig, you're not getting hot air in your face, which is something I did encounter on the original Komodo. Uh, with that said, I think that's basically it. I would say this, I feel similarly to Dominic about this camera. I do think it is a really fantastic uh, addition to Red's lineup and arguably it's probably the best camera for the money. I do think that the C300 Mark III is a very equal competitor in my book for very different reasons. Although it's hard to argue now that there's like uh, VND systems, like the breakthrough system that are really reliable and there's all the accessories that have come out for this camera. It does make it a way more attractive camera. So all in all, uh, if you're doing narrative stuff and you want to get on sets and you want to have a camera that you can take with you on a lot of different projects, this probably is the best camera for the money. Um, it has the fantastic red image that all of the red cameras have. Uh, they supposedly say it has a little bit better shadow detail. My experience was you can't really go above 3200 uh, unless you want to see a weird unfixable noise pattern. So something to keep in mind, but the image out of this camera is sharp, it's vivid, the colors look very true to life. And I would feel comfortable bringing this camera on any project. It is a fantastic workhorse and I don't think that you are going to find yourself wishing that you had something different. Good upgrade, awesome camera. I'm done talking, back to Dominic. All right, thanks Galen. That was great, short film looks awesome. Can't wait to see it. The combo of the Proteus and this Komodo X looks gorgeous. Uh, I will say, the color looks amazing coming from that camera and lens combo. Also, I'm just so, so pumped to see that thing come out. Well, overall, Komodo X, really solid upgrade over the Komodo. If you were thinking about getting one, I wouldn't have a single hesitation. It is a great camera. The only thing to note, you might need to spend a little extra money outside of the body to get things like uh, a PL mount with a built-in, um, you might need to spend some extra money on say like the audio module, some plate and cage stuff, as well as you know your media. Uh, we got this RF to PL breakthrough mount, which has been a godsend for us here. This thing basically doesn't leave the camera now ever. It is amazing having on the fly ND support for pretty much uh, any lenses we wanna run here, which is really cool. So with that, if you're thinking about getting a Komodo, Probably just do it, you won't be sad. That's our video, like and subscribe, and we'll catch you on the next one.